Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time. And that whenever and wherever you happen to be on this massive cosmic grid that we live on, that you are using your discernment and keeping your wits about you, and that you're using logic and reason in all of your interactions at this time. So I, uh, I've been doing some more research and there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there and a lot of conspiracy theories. And I believe that there's a real conspiracy afoot. I've said it all along. I think that COVID-19 is a man-made virus. And I think that they're just trying to kill off a large chunk of the population. Um, they've been talking about uh, population control for a long time. They do control the weather sometimes, right? Not maybe in every single case, but there's a lot of stuff going on around the world. And you know, if you've been listening to me on Fridays, all the stuff that's been happening. And I know you, um, you longtime listeners were here back last year when prime creator predicted that up to 30% of the population probably is going to check themselves out. And, you know, coronavirus is one way, um, living in a place in which you are surrounded by locusts eating all your food. That's another way starving to death. That's happening in Africa and the Middle East. A lot of stuff going on, but I wanted to point out some things because this was brought to my attention today. Someone sent me a video about um, some of the ideas going on. In fact, I'm going to walk over here to my window. The uh, cops are out and um, no one else. In fact, you're going to hear dogs barking in the background of my show today and just the occasional car. And when they come by, they have their police lights on so it's like the red and blue lights flashing up in my window and I think I think that's one way that they're trying to keep the martial law here but something occurred um, in my field of view as it were (laughs) this man was talking about how many people died of the flu no one's talking about this Not one media outlet is saying, oh my God, did you know that between 22,000 and 55,000 people in the United States alone have died of the flu since October? That's up to 55,000 people. Now, coronavirus, is it deadly? In most cases, absolutely not. In most cases, it's not at all. (laughs) Now, it's more deadly in Italy. In disproportionate numbers, people are dying compared to the rest of the world. According to the World Health Organization, I think it's like 1% to 2% only that get it around the whole world are dying. Only like that. One out of 100. Our numbers jumped up to 165 here in Ecuador overnight. And two people have died out of 165. Well, actually, we have 165 open cases now. So, but only two people have died, period. That's it. And I was looking up how many people live in my town. (laughs) I'm like, I should know that, right? You know, what percent of the population even contracted this virus? And 
it's extremely low still. Um, we have 418,000 people living in the city where I live. But Italy, man, they had their worst day yet. 475 people died in one day. Um, 4,207 brand new cases in Italy. But maybe that's only because they have the testing kits, right? But when I was looking at this, I was really looking at all this, and I'm like looking at the total death numbers. And when you compare it to the normal flu, it's literally nothing. 8,943 deaths as of today. 218,663 complete cases of coronavirus. Out of those, 84,383 have already recovered. Now, the death toll has gone up to 10%. 10% of the people uh, have died from it. So, it does look dire and it looks scary and sad and all that, but 55,000 people have died of the normal flu in the United States alone. Probably triple that around the world. So, why are they pushing the fear of this? There was a conspiracy theorist, and I don't know if it's real or not, if it's true or not. I mean, I believe that these things happen coincidentally, but I don't know if they're a part of each other. But he was saying that every time new technology came out, new kinds of waves came out, a new virus cropped up. I don't know if that's, you know, really true as far as them being related to each other. I mean, two things can be true. (laughs) Um, So I don't really have an opinion on whether he's right or not, but he had an interesting argument, but you know, all of the people that you know that are deeply into the conspiracy theories are um, not okay right now, emotionally. So even if you don't believe their theories or whatever, please reach out to them, ask them if they are doing okay, if they have everything they need. I know several people in Los Angeles and all the suburbs. Oh, here, look at this. 1228, here's here's the daily alarm clock, or I mean alarm, <laughs> car alarm. <laughs> I swear to God, I there's a technology I found in the United States you can turn off someone's car alarm from across the street. And I so badly want to buy that. <laughs> I want to buy it so bad. I turn this guy's car off every single day for him because for some reason everyone in the neighborhood but him hears it. There you go. He finally turned it off. I mean, you'd think that that'd be, he'd be right on it since it goes off every single night, three times a night. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, the conspiracy people, they're just, they're not doing okay right now. They're really, they're scared, right? And I did read something. I don't know how true this is or not um, either. You know, I'm not going to lie and go, yeah, this is true because I saw it on a post on Instagram, you know. It it made sense to me, I guess, but um, the 3D reality is that people are getting sick and dying. 4D reality is it's, you know, the deep state and it's a big conspiracy and it's this and it's that, Um, you know, the agenda against us to population control, blah, blah, blah. And then the 5D thoughts are good. This is the golden age of humanity and we're ascending. I don't know if that's accurate as far as like the 3d 40 versus 5d thinking I don't know you know I think that the agenda deep state stuff is still 3d but I don't know I mean I feel like um, maybe they unleashed unleash this on purpose maybe there weren't enough testing kits to go around in most places a lot of Places don't even have, you know, there's only been ever in Ecuador, 688 tests given out and 165 people had it. But now there's seven testing centers set up in this city. I don't know. It's weird to me that there's not more people just 
panicking over the flu when given the numbers. You know, in COVID-19, it's like a super bug. It's like a virus, but it's kind of like the cold mixed with pneumonia, I suppose. The more recent strain of it is really bad, which I mentioned yesterday. But I don't want you guys to freak out and just completely panic over this. Um, Freaking out and panicking over anything lowers your immune system, (laughs) you know? And does no one any good, right? 10% of the people that get it have died now. And I think that's because the numbers in Italy went up. So that makes the statistics a little more skewed. But um, it's in 173 countries. In the world, there's only 195 countries. So we got 22 countries. I bet by the end of the week, it'll be in every single country. And if you want to count the Vatican and then there's another territory similar to the Vatican, that'd be like 197. If you want to count the Vatican as a country, it's kind of not really a country, but you guys know what I mean. But yeah, I mean, I'm looking at these numbers just going, man, 41 people in the U.S. died. Um, you know, it's, it is spreading around the world. And so it's kind of weird that they're hyping it so much. It makes me feel like they want people to get tested. They want to see their global weapon, you know, it's like when you watch a movie or a TV show about a serial killer who collects articles about his handiwork, right? You know, cause he's like all interested in what they're saying about him. Right. And I just feel like the people who unleash this on the world, they're the narcissists that want to see where their little baby COVID-19 went in the world. You know, but I don't know. I mean, it's... I guess it's scary because they're hyping it up. It's more scary because they're hyping it up. When you look at the, the flu, it, that's more scary to me. Up to 670,000 people have been hospitalized since October 1st, 2019 um, from the flu. And they believe that 51 million people, up to 51 million people had the flu since October last year in the U.S. alone. 51 million versus like 200,000 with the coronavirus. I mean, are you starting to see the ridiculousness of this here? So I want you to use your discernment. Take a deep breath. And a second. And a third. (laughs) Hold space in your mind, in your heart, in your soul for... The people that lost their lives and their families, their friends and neighbors who are, are freaking out right now, especially in Italy and in Spain, Iraq, Iran, you know, all the places where it's like bigger, you know, but what are the odds? What are the odds that you're going to get it? I mean... 200,000 people around the whole world and there's like what what did I say like how many millions of people in Italy alone and there's only been well 35,000 cases in Italy it's it's substantial it's up there I don't know why it's spreading in Italy I don't in Italy I, I don't know if they have really bad health maybe they're not hygienic people I don't know couple other things I wanted you to consider. Um, You know, obviously, antibacterial soap and antibacterial, like hand sanitizer, is not antiviral. Just keep that in mind. Bleach is antiviral. It's pretty much (laughs) anti-life. So, you know, use it with caution and ventilation. But, um... 
you know, the hand sanitizer, I mean, it will do something, but it's the soap. It's the soap. It's the soap with the fat in it. Just normal bar soap. Doesn't even have to be Protex or antibacterial. Just normal bar soap will kill the virus if it's on your hands. But I think the best thing you could do is just brace yourself up with a good immune system. Eat lots of healthy vegetables, organic, if you can afford it. If you can't still eat the vegetables, just, you know, proceed with caution. Wash them very well. If you put a few drops of bleach in a five-gallon bucket, like a cap of bleach, or even half a cap of bleach in a five-gallon bucket, swish it around and put all of your vegetables in there. Let it sit for an hour or two. That will kill any germs on it. Not even, honestly, not even that much. Ten drops in a five-gallon bucket is enough bleach to, um, you know, if you're really, really concerned. You know, like if you shop in a market and everybody, in like in the, Mer- I, I call it the Mercado because that's where I live. That's what we call it here. But um, if you shop at your farmer's market and people are hacking and sneezing and coughing and not really wearing the face masks, then, you know, you might want to try that. Even if it's organic, you might want to put three, four or five drops of bleach in a five gallon bucket, fill it to the top with water, swish it around, let it sit for a few, and then put your, put your vegetables in it for an hour. Maybe even 30 minutes should be sufficient. Look it up. Maybe Google it. Maybe I don't have you know, the latest on that, but my old roommate and I used to, um, we used to dumpster dive for food. We were poor as hell. I had just lost, I just moved in and then lost my job right after. And she, um, didn't have a job either. So we were just like, what are we going to do? Oh my God. So we, she knew, she already knew she had a route plan. She knew what, when they threw out the vegetables and she's like, so the celery is a little bit limp, but still good. Right. You know, they're throwing away perfectly good food. And we would wait with other families. Um, and we would let, like, the elderly people go first. And we would, like, she would, like, literally get on, got, get on up into the dumpster. And she would, like, pass over um, the food to the elderly people that couldn't get in the dumpster. It was, like, really sad. But she taught me. She's like, look, I can teach you something that you'll remember the rest of your life if you can, if you ever in this situation again. So we did. We went dumpster diving for food. You know, I'm not too proud to say I did eat shellfish that was out of date <laughs> from the trash. It was still cold. I mean, they just thrown it away 10 minutes before. But, <laughs> you know, um, that was right after I had been homeless for a couple weeks and living literally on the street, like in my neighbor's backyard or front yard. It was pretty sketchy. It was, it, I just had a really bad, um, I've been homeless a few times in my life and it's weird. It's like I'm educated and I'm intelligent, I'm resourceful. And yet the, it wasn't from me. It was just whatever weird circumstances happened. But you know, when you're a healer, when you're an empath, a lot of times really crap things happen to you so that you have more compassion and empathy for others. And it kind of hones your skills as a healer. So I'm not, um, upset it happened. It's, said and done it's gone thank you god i've got a place to live right now i'm glad i could be indoors you know away from the virus and the madness outside there's not really all that much madness here though in ecuador like people are helping each other like this lady was she grabbed a a head of cabbage the other day and i had a bag i was gonna go put i had a cabbage in the bag and i just gave her my bag and she was like, thank you. And, you know, tell me in Spanish, thank you, love. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. And, you know, people are just really casual, you know. I was really embarrassed that my son grabbed that extra toilet paper. I'm like, dude, seriously, we're going to become the white people meme of Ecuador. This is not cool. You know, he's like, yeah, you'll thank me when we're home, though. <laughs> and then I just, I'm looking at my mound of toilet paper. I'm like, oh, my God, so embarrassing. We have, like, four, maybe... We have like five or six things of toilet paper now because I had forgotten that I bought two things before, like a week ago, and I had put it in a different place. And so when I went to look in the cupboard, we literally had like one roll left. I'm like, oh man, we need toilet paper. 
<laughs> and then I came home and we already had two things. We had bought like four things. But when we left, there was a massive mound of toilet paper in the store left because they saw ahead of time the writing on the wall and they had ordered extra and they knew. They knew this was coming, and but nobody was hoarding. It was just like, you know, there was a lot of meat. Most of the meat was gone. We didn't even get any. We didn't care. You know, we got some shrimp in case we decided we don't want to be vegan this week. You know, we're, we're already talking about eating the shrimp. Like, today we're like, maybe tomorrow we'll make some scampi. <laughs> we're like, you know, maybe we're, maybe this vegan lifestyle isn't all it's cracked up to be. We're feeling a little bit weak. You know, just eating nothing but vegetables for days after having had a lifestyle of eating chicken every other day. Now we're like, maybe, maybe. My son had some of my yogurt today. He's like, yeah, okay, I had to have dairy. I just felt like, he's like, I felt my like my blood sugar was really bad. I'm like, well, we're going to eat beans from now on because that's a good protein. So I guess we're going to be forced into the vegan vegetarian lifestyle most days for the next three weeks and my son had his um, calculator out and he's going through all the food and counting the calories that we have in the house he's like we don't have enough for the two of us for a whole month and I'm like well I'm not sure maybe we can stretch it though ration it you know and um and I asked my higher guidance. He said, Mom, please ask God how much we got. And, and God says, well, looks like you have about three weeks worth of food. I'm like, okay, good. I mean, we'll be off into April and the quarantine might be over here. I don't know. It's crazy, though, you guys. This is um, all that's going on, you know. It's just, it's meant to distract us from something else. I don't know what that something else is. When the whole world is on lockdown, what are they going to pull? That's what I want to know. You know, but usually whatever the government does has nothing to do with me anyway. Usually they make a decision and it doesn't really even affect my life. And it doesn't really even affect your life, usually. You know, some things affect our lives, okay? So when they say that... You know, gay and lesbian people cannot marry each other after they already said that we could. You know, that's that affects our lives, right? But other than that, I mean, there's not a whole lot that comes down the pike that we're like, oh my God, my life is totally affected on a day-to-day basis. You know, they make weed legal, they make weed illegal. It doesn't matter. I still got weed in my life, right? If I want it. You know, that's like the biggest thing that affects people that I know in the States. Like, you know, it causes a lot of stress if they smoke weed. In certain places, like in in Michigan, people are terrified. They don't want the cops to know they smoke weed. They're terrified of going to prison. You know, it's like big restrictions there. But people in California, they could give a crap less, you know. I just saw a video today that there's this little tiny can this guy opened and, he, and it looked like a cat food can and he popped the top and there was like three amazing buds of weed and they're like really crystallized super specialized type of weed and I'm like what the actual hell it's coming in these like cat food cans that's such a waste of resources that, that tin you know I'm like this is ridiculous it's getting ridiculous over there with the weed I don't know if the person who had that with, if they were from California, Colorado, but it's like from one of the places where it's free. But, um, most of the things, you know, that you wanted to do before, you could still do now. I was telling somebody, um, who's working for the United Nations over in Iraq, you know, um, I'm like, yeah, we could still get food delivered here, so it's not all bad. I could even get whiskey delivered here. I could get pounds of bacon delivered here. How weird is that? And today, um, you know, and he's like, whiskey, oh my God, are you kidding me? And he thought that was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, you know, hashtag priorities. (laughs) Like, if you really need the whiskey, hey, you can do it. You can do it. But today, we saw the weirdest scene there. We were um, looking out the window because the the sky was this peachy, orangey pink color. It was absolutely gorgeous. 
It was like Buck Rogers in the 21st century type of sky. And, um, I don't know, there's like one of those, and it was like hand drawn and it was kind of an orangey sky. And that's exactly what our sky looked like today. And the clouds were like very pale white with in silver color. It was just surreal. And then there were stripes. So it was like blue and then this peach and then blue and the peach and the blue and peach in the sky. And that was the stripes. It was crazy. And we were like, God, that's such a beautiful sky. And not one person walking on the street. You see the occasional stray dog, you know, and that's it. And um, all of a sudden this silver van pulls up. And there were people in hazmat suits with masks over their face in the van. And they opened the side. And I took several pictures. I don't know if I'm going to release the pictures or not. But it was surreal because... I mean, we were like, what the hell is going on, right? We thought maybe they were medical professional, prof- professionals, professionals. <laughs> um, we thought they were coming to test someone in the building. We heard some people coughing today in the building, and that scared us. And uh, we put up a big, big sheet of black plastic in front of our door today and sealed it off. We're, we're in here for good for two more weeks. And um, we saw this, these people in hazmat suits. And we're like, oh my God, right? Holy man. And they opened the side of their van and we're like expecting they're going to pull out like a medical kit or something. And then they have this, uh, these uh, plastic bins stacked on top of each other. And inside the bins they had bags of food fresh food like vegetables and I thought that was strange and then these people walk out a guy walks out with just like a hoodie and a pair of shorts tennis shoes just casual but he had a face mask on and he was there to receive the food he paid for it and then this woman who we're assuming is like maybe his mom or something she just walked out without a mask, just normal, wearing shorts, shirt, whatever. You know, like it was no big deal. Like she doesn't care. And we thought that was very weird. It was a really surreal scene. And then, because there's these people in the hazmat suits, and right next to them, just people don't give a crap. And then there's these three young guys in their 20s walk by without masks on. They just have their hoodies and jeans, normal, just normal day. And I got pictures of that. It was very weird. So this is, I just feel like this whole scene, this whole scenario is going to get weirder and weirder and weirder as um, the days and weeks and even months progress. But um, we've seen a lot more ambulances on the road. We've seen a lot more um, police on the road and hardly any cars. There was a traffic jam today when five cars went down the road <laughs> in single file. It wasn't really a traffic jam at all, but... That was like the worst thing that happened all day. But people are starting to take it seriously. In YS, this is one of the states here where the majority of the cases are, which is, thank you God, like four or five hours from here. They um, now have a curfew. They have to be in their homes and cannot leave past the time of four o'clock in the afternoon. They can only leave between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. for shopping and whatever. So the whole town or the whole county over there, or province is, or I guess it's technically like a state, but the province it's they're completely under their martial laws worse than ours here. Here we we can only leave between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. But I feel like as the more the cases get worse, it'll get worse. But again, with this with the flu and how the flu is killing a lot more people. And no one's talking about it anywhere in the world. I find it weird and I find it suspect. And I don't, I don't know. We're going to find out more. It'll come out. Everything's going to come out. You can't keep secrets like this, this big, that affects everyone. Every single individual on the whole planet will be affected by this at one point or another. So, all right. Solar wind speed. According to spaceweather.com today, is 404.9 kilometers per second. 
and we are now um, eight days without a sunspot. No sunspots to uh, talk about. <laughs> so, but they did say that there is a small one. A small sunspot is emerging on the northern hemisphere, and the magnetic polarity marks it as a member of the new solar cycle 25. And if it continues to develop and last long enough to be officially numbered, it will be the fourth one that we've had at this time. But it is a sign, they say, that this solar minimum won't last forever. Comet Atlas C2019Y4 is plunging towards the sun. They say get ready for a wild ride. If it doesn't fly apart first, it might become one of the brightest comets that we have seen in years. They say that um, that the um, uh, who is this guy? Carl Batoms of the Naval Research Lab in Washington, D.C. He says, Comet Atlas continues to brighten much faster than expected. Some predictions for its peak brightness now border on the absurd. The comet was first discovered in December 2019 by the asteroid terrestrial impact last alert system called Atlas in Hawaii. And astronomers quickly realized it might be special. So they believe that on May 31st, 2020, Comet Atlas will pass deep inside the orbit of Mercury, only 0.25 AUs, astronomical units, from the Sun. And if it can survive the blast furnace of solar heating, it might put on a good show, so it might be well worth looking at. Probably not directly or through a telescope, probably not that you could see it directly, but maybe there might be something on YouTube about it. You know, we can watch somebody else's uh, camera on on a telescope. It's always interesting to me. The thermospheric climate index is cold. The neutron counts. The cosmic radiation that's bombarding us right now remains very high, according to the Ulu Finland um, scientists. Uh, let's see. We did get solar wind that hit Earth uh, today. I'm pretty sure of it. I felt it. Did you guys feel it? I'm feeling more now, and there's going to be even more tomorrow. So, hey, you know, that's uh, something to look forward to, I suppose. Seven fireballs were seen by the All Sky Fireball Network and NASA's All Sky Cameras in the United States. So seven fireballs over the U.S. today. According to DisclosureNews.it, Basically, uh, they said 50, but this is very strange. Um, Their midnight report says the new graph started with a bang after first peak at power 36 at 1930 UTC time. The activity continued as predicted and continued to increase. From 21 UTC, the movements increased in intensity to reach power 45 at 2200 UTC time. From what we can see, it seems that there will be no, or that there will be further activity, sorry, will be. And then 9.30 in the morning, it's nine and a half hours later, they say a day of strong activity, Gaia is responding to the moment of strong impact. Of course, of what they don't say. (laughs) The strongest peaks so far have occurred in the UTC night, when at midnight the amplitude reached power 50. They were not isolated movements, but a set of variations. Of all the values reported, from 7 UTC time until now, even if the amplitude fluctuates around power 40, both the quality and frequency are having very strong movements, bringing the ECC to 85. But that's not the hertz frequency of the Schumann resonance. So what ECC is, I don't quite know. I think it's what they're now calling the background. You know, because in the background of this, it's like all these wild colors. And it's cobalt blue when there's nothing going on. Now there's like this hot electric uh, lime green along with this turquoise color. And that's kind of the background. And then there's also red. And so maybe that's what they mean. But at the 1700 report, they said the activity lasted 20 hours from 19 UTC yesterday to 15 UTC today. 
now the movements have decreased significantly. So there you go. So basically 50. That was a big, the big news from the traditional Shimon resonance. But let's see what we're um, looking at in the rest of the world. In California, they start off at 48 hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale at midnight and by 5 a.m. or 4 a.m., sorry, they were down to 46. And it was zero all the way across from beginning to end of the day. Hofuf, Saudi Arabia, they've been there for weeks at zero. In Lithuania, they started off at 110 hertz frequency at midnight. And by 4 a.m., they were at 111, 111. I don't know. Makes me happy to see three numbers in a row the same. <laughs> Reminds me of an angel number. And in Alberta, Canada, they start off at 78 hertz frequency at midnight. And by 4 a.m., they were at 81 hertz frequency. Northland, New Zealand, start off at 47 hertz frequency at midnight. By 4 a.m., well, they went up to 48. And as far as the one that's always the winner, they're not the winner today because they're actually the lowest one after, of course, Hofuf, Hulului, is who I'm talking about. They started off at midnight at 19 hertz frequency and by 4 a.m. were at zero. So that was also significant. Either way, to me, is significant. So I'm going to look up something, you guys, because I just remembered a friend of mine sent a little chart and it was going around um, Facebook and probably around the internet, just to be honest. But she did send this to me. I'm looking for her name here on my list. And it talks about all of the symptoms so that you could tell if you have one or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this now and let you know. So do I have COVID-19, the flu, or a cold is what it is what this says. So if you want to know if your symptoms are, if you're sick, I want you to freak out. I'm going to tell you what's going on, right? So If you have a sore throat, it is common to the cold and the flu, but it's only sometimes common to coronavirus. So, may or may not be the coronavirus. If you have a cough, it is common to all three. If you have sneezing, it is not a part of coronavirus at all. Sneezing, however, is common if you have a a cold and only sometimes common if you have the flu. Fever is common with the coronavirus. It is not common with the cold and it is common with the flu. So even if you have a fever, it might be the flu still, right? Now, if you have body aches, then that is definitely common with the flu. And they should only be very mild if it's a cold, and sometimes with a coronavirus, not all the time. If you feel tired, like really tired, very common with the flu, and only mildly common with a cold, and only sometimes common with coronavirus. What if you have a headache, guys? I've had a headache all day. I've had a headache all day. It's been really bad. But I look at this chart, and guess what? A headache is only common with the flu. It is not common with a cold. It is not common with coronavirus. Runny, stuffy nose is common with the cold. Sometimes common with the flu. And absolutely not at all a part of coronavirus. So if you have a runny or stuffy nose, and I've had a stuffy nose. I think I might have a flu. Actually, mild flu. Nausea, when you feel really nauseated, upset tummy, it's only sometimes a part of the flu, not a part of coronavirus, and not a part of having a cold. Now, if you have a shortness of breath, 
that's not common to the flu or the cold. And it's only in the most severe cases is it a part of coronavirus. So only things that are common to coronavirus in every case is having a, a cough, which I read before was a dry hacking cough, and a fever. That's it. So if you have any of the other symptoms, guess what? If you have a sore throat, body aches, and tiredness, that might be corona. But if you have sneezing, headache, runny nose, stuffy nose, or nausea, you don't have corona. So I don't know if that's going to help you guys feel better. I hope it does. I I wanted to send that to you because it's coming down from uh, my witchy friend who's been on the show a couple times. Cheryl sent that to me from Canada. She lives on an island and I think she said maybe only one or two people have coronavirus there and they're in self-isolation and no one else has gotten it. But, you know, when you live in a super cold place covered in snow and no one goes out anyway, I think she's pretty good to go, pretty safe. But anyway, I hope that... I hope that that has helped you. All right, so in A Course in Miracles, we are on Lesson 257. And I read these lessons in case you're brand new to the show. I've been reading these lessons, well, obviously for 257 days now. (laughs) Or a little bit longer because I'm taking weekends off. But I've been reading them because they're high vibrational teachings. And in the event that we get a little scared or freaked out by what's going on around us in the world, we have this as kind of an anchor to raise our vibrations up. I know that these words are real and true. And they're not going to affect us in a negative way. They're not going to be hijacked by the cabal or whatever. (laughs) I don't even know that that's real. I mean, you know, um, Sarah O'Brien talked about that. And usually her stuff, it's like, yep, 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 yep. And then sometimes she says something off the cuff and wild like that. I'm like, what? Like the other day I was watching her video and I fell asleep because of all the cosmic gamma radiations coming in. I just felt like absolutely tired. I kept trying to watch stuff yesterday and I kept falling asleep. My body's like, nope, (laughs) not inspired by that. Just tired. So I was turning my, my, uh, (coughs) turning my sight inward and falling asleep. (laughs) But when she said that we are, I mean, she was like talking about the, the Corona and all the different things, coronavirus, but she's also saying that she used to be able to see Donald Trump's chakras and now when she sees his chakras there aren't any she's like I don't see one chakra in his body and she so now she's assuming he's an artificial intelligence (laughs) artificial yes intelligence no I'm thinking (laughs) I, I don't I don't I don't even know what to say to that. I don't know how to respond to that. You know, um, I, I don't think it's true. I don't think these people are being downloaded into intelligences or AI bots. There were weird rumors about Hillary Clinton <laughs> being an AI, like she's been uploaded to an AI bot. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, If you're going to have your mind and thoughts and I don't know what all they upload, but if they, if you're going to have it uploaded to an AI, would you want the AI to look 68 years old? I mean, call me shallow. I don't give a fuck. I know I am, but I would want to look hot, sexy 30, right? I wouldn't want to look a day over 30. I mean, I would be like, give me the sexy Susie model. You know, I don't want something that looks like me now <laughs> out of shape. I want me from back when I was, you know, maybe 19 years old. Even I had a smoking hot body back then when I worked out six hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week. I don't know. I, I, it doesn't, I don't buy it. Why would you want to, you know, why wouldn't you want to just like say, Hey, I got fit. 
You know what I mean? And look, you know, we have a body that doesn't have the weird spray on tan with the extra white eyes, which makes no sense for, you know, the hair du jour of insanity or, you know, the paunchy belly. Like, why would you want to look like that? I mean, he's a narcissist, so he just, he just thinks he's perfect anyway. You know, I could see that, but (laughs) I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I just, you know, maybe her discernment is offline or her eyesight or vision for that is offline right now. I know I had a few kind of scary days where I wasn't really able to hear the voice of God when I have been every day for years. And then suddenly it was maybe two weeks that it was, it would come in and then it wouldn't be there. Then it would be a couple of days without it. And I just felt so lost. And that happened a couple months ago. I was feeling very lost, but now I'm back online again. And I just felt like I was hopping over. I was just in the middle of hopping on over to the fifth dimension or something. But I don't know. I don't know what it's like to see people's chakras. I can't see auras or chakras. Um, yesterday when I had two angels in my room, I could only make out the outline of their wings. And I saw a bright white light above their heads. And they each had a different hue to the white light. It wasn't pure white light. It was like a... One was like kind of pinkish and one was kind of um, bluish. You know, platinum and rose gold, like what I've been talking about. Those are the colors I saw. But... Um, and those I actually saw with my physical eyes. The, the lights did appear in my room. But the rest of, you know, and then the outline of their wings, that did appear in my room. Or at least appeared in my eyes. But I don't know. My eyesight's been in and out. Like, oh my God, half the time people write me, I could barely see the screen. <laughs> Sometimes I have to wait an hour and, and then I could go back, you know, or rest. And then I'm fine again. And I could see again. I don't even know anymore with this today I was just getting frustrated because the energy was coming in fast and furious and all my joints ached and hurt and I had I iced my whole spine I was in so much pain and I'm like okay I accept the light codes I accept the downloads I accept all the energy you know being accepting is what makes it go away <laughs> and I'm imagining integrating the energy and the light and it was just it kept on and on and on it was so bad I thought I had a sinus infection. That's how bad the headache was. And after a while, it went away. So I'm like, well, if it's an infection, it just gets worse. So that's not what it was. Anyway, speaking of infection, I want you guys to make sure you eat a lot of green vegetables. Even if it's um, powdered like moringa or um, the powder of wheatgrass, um, the whole whole wheatgrass powder. Just have a glass of that every day. Boost your immune system because that what that does is it feeds the good uh, bacteria in your gut, which will fight off all infections. And if you do get a virus, don't go on antibiotics because it's a virus. It's not going to help anyway. It will only help in the case of a secondary infection, which is bacterial in nature. And um, generally speaking, you won't need it. You know, I, I have asthma and that's always a protocol for asthmatics, but you know what? When I get sick, I never take antibiotics. I don't even go to the doctor. Now, if I get sick this time, I will because of the coronavirus, and it could be the worst one, but um, I don't know. It's just keep your gut healthy. That's why I've been having yogurt lately and lots of vegetables lately, and I, I want you guys to follow suit in that. You know, if you eat chicken, fine. If you eat fish, fine. If you eat only vegan, fine. You know, but make sure you get your vegetables, no matter what else you're eating with it. All right, we're going to go back to this now. Okay, we're on Lesson 257. A Course in Miracles, and this is what it is. <clears throat> Let me remember what my purpose is. Let me remember what my purpose is. If I forget my goal, I can be but confused, unsure of what I am, and thus conflicted in my actions. No one can serve contradicting goals and serve them well nor can he function without deep distress and great depression. Let us therefore be determined to remember what we want today, that we may unify our thoughts and actions meaningfully and achieve only what God would have us do this day. 
Father, forgiveness is your chosen means for our salvation. Let us not forget today that we can have no will but yours. And thus our purpose must be yours as well. If we would reach the peace, you will for us. Let me remember what my purpose is. So you can get it on the app or acim.org. Again, we're at lesson 257 if you want to reread it later. Um, actually, you know, go, going through the whole Course in Miracles, reading the full lessons starting from the beginning would actually do you a world of good at this time if you want to do that. No quarantine. Days of quarantines. <laughs> the days of wine and roses and quarantinis. <laughs> but somebody um, that I know on Facebook... I swear to God, she listened to my episode last night. I know she doesn't listen to my show. I just feel it in my gut that she doesn't listen to my show. But she literally put up on Facebook going, you don't have to write a novel this this time. You don't have to learn a language. You don't have to. And it's like the first like four things she said you don't have to <laughs> are the things that I are, are things that I actually said last night of ideas of things that you could do if you wanted to, to be productive. So I thought that was kind of funny. I just thought, you know... That's weird. I don't know if I mentioned this the other day, but like uh, Sunday or Saturday, maybe my son went to this store that he found down the street with a bunch of electronics, really interesting things. Like he got a sonic toothbrush. He got a teeth whitening kit, you know, just like for five bucks, <laughs> you know, each, everything he's getting is like five bucks. And for like $20, he found this little, it looks like a little original like Game Boy system, even though it's completely off brand. It's the SUP brand, S U P, like what's up? Hilarious, right? And it's yellow. <laughs> so it's like not, it's just, I don't even know, you know probably me in China. But, um, you know, because they have a lot of neat electronic stuff like that that's always off brand, but still works really well. So anyway, it doesn't matter, but he has this thing and he just got it. And it's like a hundred arcade games from when arcade games were brand new, like Donkey Kong, Mario Brothers, Pac-Man, probably Miss Pac-Man, even Othello. Remember that really strange game, Othello? It's kind of boring, but like there was literally a video game. Pop the quarters in, play Othello on the on the electronic screen, and people were like, "Oh, these are cool," like Pong and um, playing football and baseball and racing games. And he bought this like probably less than 48 hours before we were um, forced into quarantine. And today I was like, I am so glad you found that, that you got that on time so that for the next two to three weeks, you've got these little video games to keep your mind occupied from going crazy you know, when I'm not up, you know, when we're not hanging out together. It's really, really cool that you got these games to play, you know. So one of these days I'm probably going to sit down and play Mario Brothers or Donkey Kong with him or or Pac-Man. And um, I just thought it was kind of cool. I just want to mention that. It's like this guy, this kid, my kid's got a sixth sense for weird things that he's going to need like that. I just, I just had to mention it because that was just so strange. The timing of it was very, very odd. I'm really mad though. He didn't give me a sonic toothbrush, <laughs> something I really could have used at this time, but eh, I'll get it in a couple weeks. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm actually going to channel, uh, Michael Sherhan of Ashtar command and the Pleiadian light forces tonight. Um, it's been a week since we heard from him, but he said he had some things he wanted to discuss tonight. I think he's ready to talk about the virus and all the things going on in the world right now. So stay tuned. I'll be right back after this message. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, 
They have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the anchor.fm app right on my cell phone and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And so can you. You can make money from your podcast also. And there's no minimum requirement. You get paid from your very first listener. It is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So please, if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own, do not hesitate to start with Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. All right, guys, I am here with Michael Sherhan of Ashtar Command. I'm already connected with him and we've been talking for a couple minutes and I just started getting so happy and giddy and I'm like seeing her laughing because his energy is so incredibly high vibrational and there's like no worry in his energy field. And I just, I feel giddy and happy that he's here with me right now. And, um, it's just been just in the past few minutes kind of adjusting to his energy. It's been really cool. Anyway, I am an indirect telepathic channel. I do not allow anyone to take over my body. Just a little rule I have. (laughs) Um, I don't know if it's because I'm a Virgo and a control freak about my body, but I mean, Aren't most of us kind of a control freak about that? Don't like entities randomly taking over? (laughs) So I've honed my telepathic ability to include hearing the voices of sometimes disincarnate beings. But in this case, this is um, a man who lives in the fifth dimension. He is from the star cluster, the Pleiades. He lives on originally on one of the planets there, but... Lately, he's been surrounding the planet with his light ships. He and his crew, Ashtar Command, as they're called, they're part of a greater uh, galactic federation. And I know all this sounds completely nuts, but if you look him up, if you've never heard of Michael Ashtar or Michael Sherhan of Ashtar Command, then you will be absolutely surprised because he does actually channel through a lot of different people and all the information and messages tend to be a little bit different so you could listen to me and three other people and you're going to get a more clear picture on what's happening from all the different channels so that's pretty cool Michael Love just had a really amazing message from him so if you want to go to michaellove.com Um, his stuff is pretty interesting uh, what he gets from Michael Sherhan actually Michael Sherhan was responsible for me meeting a friend of mine here in in Ecuador he got us together (laughs) I don't know how he did it but he did I got a message from this guy and he says I'm an alien and I wrote you're plating he says I'm plating we wrote at the same time came up on the screen exactly the same second And we started laughing. We thought, that's hilarious. And so we've kind of bonded, but he told me that he was contacted by Michael Sherhan years ago. And I was only contacted by him about a year ago when I started the show because he wanted to get his message out through me on the show to you guys. So, all right. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to get into it. (sighs) I know I'm already connected because I don't even have to ask because... I just film right here. Okay. So here we go. Go ahead, Michael. You can start anytime. Hello and greetings. I am Michael Sherhan of Ashtar. 
command, I am surrounding your planet with the Pleiadian light forces. And in these moments, in these days that seem so tense for all of you, we are so filled in our hearts with a golden light of joy. And it's permeating every single molecule of our beings, of our existence, because we see something that you do not see. We see that the liberation of man is at hand. We are getting ready to move forward with everything that we have promised. Everything that (laughs) you guys are so happy. (laughs) I'm like giddy. Like I'm feeling giddy inside. I feel his energy is infectious in a good way. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) All right, Michael, go, go, go. Tell us more. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> he's like stop interrupting me then he's like laughing <laughs> the way that the news of this virus is spreading and the way that the virus is spreading is bringing such a fear and a panic and a state of absolute uh, are you saying oneness you're saying singleness singleness Single-mindedness. Okay, he said singleness, and he's like, no, wait, that's not right either. Yeah, single-mindedness. Okay, it's bringing a single-mindedness among all the people of the planet at the same time. And when a thing of this magnitude occurs, and nothing of this magnitude has ever occurred on Earth, not to the extent that every single person was aware of it, like this, when something this big happens it makes it so easy oh god I'm getting I'm like burning up suddenly so okay it makes it so easy for us to come in because people are seeking for answers and people are reaching out and they're reaching up to us and to their spiritual selves and their higher guidance and We are in full force giving our love and our light and soon our technology. We are hoping to come very quickly to the aid of humanity because we see that, well, we know that with our technology we can heal this immediately. It's not, viruses are not an issue for us. We can shatter them and we will shatter this. So if you do feel like you need help, we want to be there for you. Just say, hey, Michael Sherhan or hey, Pleiadians, help me. I'm afraid. Help me not be afraid. I feel like I'm sick. Help me not be sick. We will beam light right at you today, right now. We will help heal your environment as well we see the fear that is running rampant through your streets on earth and we are beaming a lot of love and light to alleviate the fears and we're trying to get the message out and so we've been making the rounds as it were and speaking through many different channels that have been our uh, land or ground crew um spiritual partners in aiding us to aid all of humanity. So (laughs) we want really fast. We really, really fastly, really quickly. We want really quickly to come to earth and just give you the replicators with all of the healing technology and the food technology and the money technology and the reset of all the money we want to see all of this happen the reset of everything we are so excited because the, the, the time is right now for all of and uh, are you saying Nasara? yeah so yeah you saying including Nasara. you have to look that up guys n-e-s-a-r-a it's about the reset of the money we are working around the clock diligently and hurriedly to get all this information out to you and to get all of 
the technology out to you because we see that instead of the fear and the panic and the horrible energy that's going around with this virus, that there's an opportunity to just flip the switch. And that's what we want to do. We want to just change the dialogue and flip the switch and say, hey, we're here. We're not going away. We love you. You're our brothers and sisters. We wish to be with you. We wish to always be with you. And we want to help you. Because it's not just we're coming to aid our little brothers and sisters at their hour of need. It's just that your your earth, your humanity, your population, all of those that view that rise up and awaken are going to be given an, an opportunity to be a part of the greater galactic federation. You're going to meet your space brothers and sisters. It will be Star Wars Cantina, the positive version. And it's just right around the corner. All right, Michael, this is me, Elena, talking now. Michael, when when is this going to happen? Because you were saying, like, before last year, you are saying, like, two years, maybe 18 months. Are you going to try to land, physically land in our yards, in our streets, in our cities, in our town squares, before 18 months? (laughs) Ha, yes, that, he said. This is Michael again talking. He says, yes, that, um... We're hoping to do so in five months, if not three months time. We're hoping to get just to, to come, but we need enough of you asking about us, asking for our help because we can't interfere. We cannot interfere until enough people have said, Hey, we need the aliens to come and help us. We need the extraterrestrials to come and help us or the extra dimensional beings to come and help us. We want the Pleiadians, our brothers and sisters from the Pleiades to come and be at our side and help us. However you choose to ask, we're going to get the message. And most of you have been asking, believe it or not, most of you are asking. So, okay, Michael, this is me, Elena, now asking how many What is the percentage of people that are awake that have been asking? Uh, So you're saying 77 to 78%. Yeah. That's what he's saying. He's like, yeah, we've, we've out of all the people that are awake and aware 77 to 78% have been asking. And that's a greater majority then, right? Yes, indeed it is. We're hoping for a little bit more engagement but we are now starting um, to plan our our descent to Earth. Uh, we don't mean descending in an in energetic uh, realm way, but in a way in which we are... Uh, he's not saying anything, guys. Uh, I'm waiting for him. Yeah, he's having a conversation with Kira. Is that Kira? Hi, Kira. <laughs> Kara's the other uh, Pleiadian. She's always with us. So she's like his right right hand person. Um, so I'm hearing 90% now. Kara's saying there's like 90 to 91% of the people have started to ask because of the virus in the past three to four days. Wow. Really? So I guess Michael didn't have the updated numbers. Is that what's happening? (laughs) What kind of crew are you running, man? (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) So he says, yeah, I didn't even have the updated numbers. So it's about 91. Okay. So now what? Yeah. He's like, well, that might make it so that in two to three months time, we have to make four provisions of, of course, your governments might panic and want to use their weapons or try to use weapons against us. They might try to take over the operation or make certain areas quarantined and lie about the disease 
to contain us. So we're trying to get into place all of the things that we would need to avoid those types of scenarios, even though they can't really touch us with their 3D technology the way that we can. Um, are you saying mask? Okay. I feel like it didn't make sense to me there. The way that we can mask our ability to be seen. Oh, so you mean like cloaking your ships? Yes, we have technology to cloak our bodies. Um, he's showing me something, you guys. He has something on his wrist that is just like a, a like almost like a, looks like a bracelet of some kind, and he just touches it, and an energetic force field goes around him and reflects and refracts the light so that you can't see him. You just see what was behind him, in front of him. And we've had that technology for a while, actually. Not, like, on a bracelet, though, but I've seen this technology in airplanes. I've seen an invisible plane go by. It was like the outline of clouds in the shape of a plane with the sound of a plane going overhead, but I couldn't really see the plane. It was just a faint outline. It was very weird. And um, I've seen in magazines, Omni Magazine, they had a picture of a house. That one side of the house just reflected the beach behind it, which I thought was really cool. So that it looks like an invisible house. He said, yes, this is very old technology on your world, but it's been around for 40 years or maybe 45 years. He's like, he's like, we, he's like we, so we have these kinds of technologies. We have more greater technologies and higher advanced uh, technologies are based on quantum mechanics as well as as well as um, deflective shield weaponry. It's kind of a reverse. It, you know, we don't have weapons to hurt anybody, but we have the deflection so that we can stop weapons in their tracks and we can um, deflect them in a way that they get diffused immediately and therefore nobody gets hurt on either side. We've been working with your world for tens of thousands of years and we know how humans will react. The ones who are not enlightened, the way that they're going to react is pretty much our biggest concern at this point. Um, we also just don't want people to die of heart attacks. <laughs> when they see the ships, they might freak out if they are particularly asleep or religious or adamant that we're not real. But we're round the clock working on it. We want to come. We want to come sooner. We feel like the need is greater that we come sooner rather than later. And now that so many people have been asking for us, we're thinking just in a couple months, you will start to see more and more of our light ships in the sky. We're going to start blanketing your world more with light that will be visible to your eyes, not just your higher vision eyes. For those of you that are psychic, um, you're already seeing what we're doing in your world. We are working closely with the Arcturians. We're working closely with the um, other beings and creatures from other dimensions and, and planets, as it were. Um, Andromedans? Yeah, okay, they're saying yes to that. What about the Larens? Yes, we're working with the Larens, of course. And we're working with the um, Ontarians? Yes. And who else? Um, you're not saying blue avians, no. You're saying so it sounds like blue, though. He, he's saying something, you guys, I can't. Blue Sprechen Shield? I don't know. It almost sounds like German. He says, yeah, they're, they're, they do, they're, they sound like German and they've been pretty much silent in your world. No one's really been contacted by them and no one's really been, um, channeling them and they come from a very high vibrational ninth dimensional, um, being, and they, they went through their shift hundreds of millions of years ago. Were they ever in 3d? No, they start off in 5D, he says. But they are more of like guardians and keepers of the galaxy or of the galaxies. And they 
hold a key that is kind of like a technology for unlocking and opening the floodgates of the higher vibrations to come into the lower vibrational worlds. And they just unlocked that technology this past week. Oh, that's like super cool. All right. So what are their names again? I'm sorry. I want to get this name. It's, it sounded like you're saying blue, it's like almost like Spreckensy, like Spreckensy Deutsch. And I know that's not what he's saying, guys. It's so weird. Um, I don't know. Spur, Spurlugrafor. I don't know. I, it's, <laughs> Maybe I should just not call him that because I, I can't even say, I can't even pronounce this. He says I could barely pronounce it myself, but they are higher energetic beings. And he's asking me if I've seen the light purple ones and also the white ones. Okay. I have had the white beings come. They're like 11th dimensionals, right? And he's saying yes. So I'm doing muscle testing too, guys. That's how I could discern yes and no. Um, on two different levels, just with telepathy as well as my energetic feeling in my body as well as my muscle testing. So, okay, who are the lavender beings? They are also a high vibrational 11th dimensionals and they are literally the keepers of the fabric of time and space. And what they do is they just hold the vibrations. They are just like set in place. Imagine, um, okay, he's showing me when I was a kid, we had a teacher who had a parachute and it had a tear in it as a a parachute cloth. And she was a skydiver, but there was a tear in this one and she had to replace it. So she thought it'd be fun. She just sewed, you know, sewed it back up, but she thought it'd be fun for the kids to play with because parachute fabric is very It's silk and it's, it's very, um, or silky and it's very, um, light and airy and yet, so it catches the air really easy and you can glide down on it and ride the wind with it. So he's showing me this image of when I was a kid, when I had this parachute hand in my hand and all the kids stood in a circle. It was like 30 or 40 of us and we're all holding our, um, with each hand. A, a, a section of the parachute fabric. So that's the image he's giving me right now, guys, just so you get that. And we would lift it and we would pull it down and we would lift it and pull it down, but we always held it to the same tautness. Or I guess you'd call it tightness as well, but tautness, T A U T. And we were holding it um, so she could teach us how uh, we could catch the wind and hold a person. So, okay. He says, good. Now you've got, you all have that image clear in your mind. And so the, the, the beings that are purple, they're like a lavender in their skin color. They're very high vibration. And when we say skin, it's not like what you know to be skin. They're very, very ethereal. And they're just like holding on to the fabric of time and space as you did when you were little, holding on to the parachute fabric. And they are constantly blowing with their mouths energy, love, and light and their intentions for highest vibrations possible in individuals without taking away individuality. And this is their nature. This is their um, their job and their nature to always raise everything to its highest vibrational point. Now, in the 3D world, this creates havoc because in order to raise yourself to the highest three dimension or the highest vibrational point in a three dimensional world where everything is duality and the opposite is always a push me pull you going on, um, it creates more chaos than they intend when they first blow out that wind from their mouth, that energy, that, that vibration. So depending on what you pick and choose, because you have free will, their intentions sometimes can counteract what you think you want for yourself. And sometimes that's 
what the ancient Greeks called the winds of fate. (laughs) But little did they know that the winds of fate are literally these purple beings blowing into the fabric of time and space, holding the vibration of this galaxy together. All right, so then who are the white beings that I've seen? They've stood me, they've stood in my room, in my kitchen, while I was mopping the floor once, and they were, I think maybe one time when I was cooking as well, or doing dishes, just when I'm doing mundane chores, they have shown up, and I've asked, what do they want? And they they don't give me any smile. They don't give me any um, frown. They just have a blank expression, and they stare at me, and they telepath with me, and they don't move their mouth, and they say, usually, we are only here to observe you. That's all they said to me. It's really freaky. (laughs) I feel good, uh, a high vibration from them. I won't call it love, but it's more of a um, energy of we're here. You don't need to fear. We're, we want to observe you. That's like kind of energy. It's kind of like not quite scientist, scientific, <laughs> sciency. It's not that kind of energy, but it's almost like they're watching my high vibrations in the spiritual realm, and it's like they're trying to get me higher yet. It's almost like they're seeing if I'm prepared for something great and they're watching me and they're waiting for me to raise my vibration or something. I don't know what it is, but that's who Michael's referring to now. So, all right, Michael, please tell me who these white beings are. Okay. So they generally appear around 10 or 11 feet tall and they have really big heads very bulbous on top heads and they're very and they're very pale um, white almost a pale grayish white in some cases and but they're uh, they're very very translucent and white in their energy and so who did well, who are they what do they do <laughs> I'm so I'm so curious <laughs> and, and impatient sorry about that he says I'm getting to that okay so these white light beings are the masters of are you saying time they're the masters of light and time and their job is to so you're saying um, pluck people out so their job is to pluck people out of their realities even if it's for a split second and to give them a greater glimpse of what lies ahead and beyond and above. And when they do this, the person usually has no conscious memory of it. And what happens is they'll have a just a boom, leap in consciousness, and that's usually what precipitates or comes before a timeline hop and a vibrational jump up as well. So their job or duty, as it were, is to scan everybody in your world and they see the ones that are ready or on the verge of hopping up in consciousness or in, um, into a new timeline. And so if you are just going along about your day and everything's fine and all of a sudden you feel a rush, like you're hopping a timeline And then all of a sudden, boom, you have the downloads and the memory and the light codes have been in place. And it feels like you downloaded it in a heartbeat. Whereas normally you would be downloading light codes over the matter, over a matter of many, many hours in some cases. But if you feel like something happened in that split second, it's because of the white beings and they are keepers of your galaxy but from the spiritual perspective not the time and space perspective but the spiritual perspective and through the high vibrational spiritual nature of their energy they can help you hop the timelines and navigate time itself in a much more fluid way 
and when they are around is when you're going to get the time anomalies. Oh, and they're telling me, like, when I told you guys before, when I was, I put the popcorn on in the, in the kitchen, I went into the living room, and the time in the kitchen sped up really, really, really rapidly, and where I was at, time seemed to stand still. It was very weird. And the time is not 100% um, the same everywhere. It could be different in your living room than in your bedroom. It's very, very weird. And, um, yeah, I put the popcorn on and I was listening for the very first pop. And instead of the very first pop, the popcorn was absolutely burned to a crisp through and through. And I was smoking black smoke, but only three minutes had passed in the living room. And that, it, like, takes ten minutes to make popcorn here. I'm at a high altitude. And I always keep it on low. And, I mean, I usually even 12 seconds would it takes to even get it a little bit of a burn on the edge because sometimes I like that <laughs> so I, I know how, how long days popcorn I've been talking about it all the time I make popcorn all the time and the time just fully changed so okay so you're telling me that these guys had to something to do with that yes you find more time anomalies when they are observing you close up and personal even though you might not be aware of them usually people are not aware of them and they get a little bit Curious, as well as, um, what is that word? I'm sorry. Uh, not annoyed. I know it's not annoyed. It's 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 it's, uh, it's not ambivalent either. Uh, there's a word you're saying. I'm not getting. It begins with an A, though, right? Yes. At least I got that part. <laughs> so they get curious when people are aware of. Is that what you're saying, Michael? That, that you're they're curious when people are aware of the time anomalies around them yes because usually people cannot detect it and that's how they know that you're um, advancing rapidly in your awareness you're becoming more and more awake even though it's a spiritual advancement it's really more of an awakenment that takes place and so they tend to have a curiosity and more interest in those who are on the verge of complete and total um cosmic consciousness as it were and if they see that you're close to it they will hop you up they will hop you up to a different timeline so these are just some of the beings that have been in your world kind of the behind the scenes people functioning here to create this grand illusion that you live in to help you understand yourself better. These are the beings that God has, you know, prime creators put into place to always keep this world as consistent as possible. And only, so it's only the white beings and only the white beings are the ones that have been um, responsible for the time anomalies among the awakening ones who are very, very close. They're at the precipice of being fully enlightened spiritual beings well that makes me happy that makes maybe I'm on the verge of that he says yes in fact many of your listeners are right on the very verge of that and the ones who are not are only a few weeks behind um, behind the ones that are ready to hop into that complete and total cosmic consciousness but we want to make it clear that if you're in the fifth dimension doesn't mean that now you've arrived, you've achieved clear and perfect cosmic consciousness. There are many fifth dimensional beings, we are sad to report, that are not very high vibration. They're just their fifth vibration, but they're not spiritually awake. Most of the ones that we, most of the individuals that we work with, and all the races that we work with are very much in that higher vibration with us. But as far as having that complete and total cosmic consciousness and knowingness, even among our kind, even among the Pleiadians, even among the Galactic Federation members, that is a very rare trait indeed. So when you're attracting the attention of those white beings then rest assured that you are well on your way 
to achieving what most people have not yet. And eventually in time, everybody will achieve it. That's that complete cosmic consciousness, self-realization, enlightenment, Buddhahood, all the words that are the magical spiritual words that that are your new age buzzwords <laughs> that so many people bandy about without truly understanding what it is but everyone knows that we that they want it these are these these concepts and ideas it's what you're all striving towards and what's you're all headed towards absolutely but when you get very, very close, that's when those beings start to show up. And that's when you know the time anomalies are happening. But the timeline hopping thing is happening for everybody, um, whether you're close to that or not. So we wanted to let you know about that specifically. Um, so. So, uh, yeah, we are beaming our are you saying UVA and UVB UVA we're, we're beaming a higher dimensional frequency UVA light your way we did talk about this through Michael Love um, and we're saying it now we're beaming it through your layers of your upper atmosphere all the way down to the ground so if you do see the Pleiadian light ships in the sky a shield your eyes because of the radiation that we are putting through to cleanse the air of not only the corona but the flu virus and other viruses that have been released a lot of um, health problems have come down in Australia lately and we are sending we have ground crew there they're praying and meditating all the time to heal the land and the people and stop the energy of the PTSD and they're working around the clock as well most of the healers there aren't even aware how much energy they're being sapped of by putting the energy into the grid at that point but we also are working to cleanse the particulate matter in the air above Australia as well and we are sending a lot of love and light energy for the animals to heal the land to heal and the people and we have gone to everywhere in the world where there have been your earth changes and your disasters and the spread of the locusts and all the animals um, where the animals are stressed where the people are stressed where the weather has been terrible we are sending a lot of these uh, beams, higher vibrational beams. We're also sending a high vibrational violet into your world at this time. This is for balancing the higher chakras and for bringing people into spiritual alignment and awareness. You're going to see a lot of people waking, awakening in the next two to three months. We need as many people awake as possible for when we land. We're not going to land an en mass, though. We're not going to land, you know, one on one ship on every corner. Not quite yet. <laughs> In fact, we probably will never do that because that really would freak out too many people. But we're planning on starting with continents and then countries and then states and then finally cities. But it's going to be kind of a slow reveal. People will see lights in the sky and then eventually they'll be revealed that it will be revealed to them that they are ships, not just a light. And it's going to be very slow and gradual so that nobody needs to freak out or panic over seeing us, especially the ones that are still asleep. In fact, the ones that are very asleep won't be able to see us at all and they will continue to insinuate that you are crazy if you see us because we're going to put out kind of a it, it's kind of um, a frequency it's a low level like a radio frequency um, beam it's kind of like a radio wave and it's not going to be harsh it's going to be very gentle 
it's going to be the, are you seeing the lowest end of the spectrum? No, he says actually it's the highest end of the spectrum, but it's like a high frequency radio wave that will, it, it's almost like it's going to be like an emotional shield for the people who are really scared. That they won't see what they think they see. And then they will forget immediately after because we don't want people to panic. We don't want people to freak out. But we are excited about the golden age of man. We know it's coming. Um, and we are helping with our part of bringing it about. But really and truly, you are the true heroes because you've been working on yourselves. You've been working on your healing, your family ancestral lines, your Akashic records. You're trying to clear everything in your life and in your energy fields. And we see you doing the work. And if it wasn't for each of the individuals doing work, we wouldn't, it would not have made it possible for us to even come into your world. So look for us in the skies. Look for us um, soon in a town near you. And we're, we're thinking nine weeks to 12 weeks is when we will begin to arrive physically your ears and your eyes will be attuned and adjusted the greater majority of you we're saying 90 90 no 79 percent to 86 percent of you it's our guesstimation our best guess is that that's how that's a percentage of you that will have your eyes attuned so that when we do arrive you will actually be able to see us and at first we're going to appear very ethereal until you get it used to and adjusted to our vibration and then eventually we will become more solid um, to your vision and so we look forward to the exchange and we are already your brothers and sisters and we cannot wait to share in all the beauty and all the love and all the light with you guys. We're going to sign off now, but we are bowing to the God in you with the God in us. And we're sending you the highest vibrational frequencies of love and healing and peace. I am Michael Sherhan of Ashtar Command and the Pleiadian Light Forces here to represent my part of the Galactic Federation. Namaste. Alright guys, well there you have it. There you have it, Michael. Share hand. I feel really, really sleepy and also super hot. This whole time that I was channeling him, tons of energy and light codes pouring through me. Hopefully you guys are getting those through my voice. And through my energy that is transmitted over the podcast. Um, If you want my healing energy, by the way, if you or anyone you know needs healing, just say, I wish to tap into the healing grid. And my healing energy is already in it. I'm pumping uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for years now. Energy, um, high vibrational healing energy, such as Reiki. And um, it's just flowing through me like water. God's just using me as like a giant straw and it's just like flowing through. So anytime you need any healing, I'm not the only one. There's thousands of light workers that are putting energy into this grid automatically. Most of them know about it. Some don't. But it's an automatic thing. And you just pray and it comes up through your feet, through the chakras in your feet. Sometimes... It will come up next to your body and will enter in your body where it needs to. So, you know, if you need healing only in your throat chakra, it will flow up and float up and then go into your throat. So that's kind of um, one project I worked on years ago. And that helps. And that's and, and I'm only one of thousands. And I've been finding out in recent months that you know, who worked on these projects. Um, I've met now two or three people, so it's pretty exciting. 
that uh, people who have worked on this, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, because <laughs> we, you know, we, none of us were like, we don't have each other's phone numbers. We don't braid each other's hair and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> we don't even know each other. And yet we, we're working together. And I know a lot of you listening have worked on several projects like this. And it might be in your sleep and it might just not even seem real, but it's absolutely real. So I want to thank you all for your service because everybody right now is serving the greater part of humankind, you know, with various things that we do or say, energy we put into the grid, prayers that we say. So I want to thank you guys for all that. Anyway, that was it. That was Michael Sherhan. I'm, I'm done for the night. I'm, um, I'm going to stop recording so I could get this out to you guys. <laughs> So I want to remind you, if you haven't already, mark your calendar for July 1st and let it say, uh, nominate Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast for the People's Choice Award. Now when it comes time in, in June and July, I will be putting out more information on what re- website you're going to have to go to do that. So, But just for now, if you can mark it in your calendar, don't forget, vote for me. <laughs> the People's Choice Award if you like the podcast and you think that I deserve it in the spirituality category I would I would love to um, get the word out by winning the award you know it's not like prize money or anything it's not like the Nobel Prize <laughs> you know I think it's like a million dollars when you win the Nobel Prize it's nothing like that I think they might send you a trophy but I'm not sure it'd be cool if they do <laughs> But um, even if they don't, I just want to get the word out. And I think that's a good way to do it, don't you? Anyway, um, I want to thank you in advance for liking, subscribing, sharing with all your people on Instagram and all your Facebook groups. I'm really, really grateful for those of you who have shared and those of you who are about to share me with the world, with your world, your people. When people are hungry for information because they just woke up spiritually Speaking, I have a whole host, no pun intended, of episodes last year that were like mini workshops up to two hours long each on chakras and auras and even one on voodoo and witchcraft, feng shui, all kinds of classes in the form of a podcast. So I'm here to help everybody wake up and continue to spiritually grow and wake up as well as just lend myself as an energetic channel for the greater divine to come through me and use my body as an instrument of his peace and will to help all of you become more enlightened and awakened in these days. So remember, don't panic over what's going on in the world. You don't need to. It's not necessary. Does no one any good. And plus, your chances of gaining the actual flu are much greater than... The other, more people have been killed from the flu than this. But, even still, keep your body healthy, you're not going to ever get sick. Good health begins with you. So, um, antibiotics, I mean, not antibiotics, probiotics, like uh, yogurt, fermented foods. If you're a vegan, you don't have to do yogurt, obviously. But fermented foods, it's very good. And also, eat your greens, eat your vegetables, listen to grandma's advice now. (laughs) My grandma used to say, eat your okra. (laughs) It's like, oh my God, okra is the most disgusting vegetable in the world. I only like it in Indian food. (laughs) But eat your vegetables, it's good for you. It will increase your gut health, which will increase your immune system health and overall you will be much, much healthier and happier in the long run. So more fruit, more vegetables, mostly vegetables. Even sourdough bread. Hey, that's a fermented food. Beer's a fermented food, right? (laughs) Whiskey, right? (laughs) Uh, Apple cider vinegar. Don't forget, if your tummy hurts especially, that's a good fermented food and it'll help you lose weight if you need to lose weight. Um, It's one of my favorite fermented foods these days I don't like the flavor at all I hold my nose every time I'll take a little sip out of the bottle and then I'll just chase it with a big huge glass of water followed by a second glass of water usually 
because I don't like the taste, but it does do my body good and it will do your, yours good as well. You need to keep your stomach acidic, the rest of your body alkaline. So Dr. Berg, Ralph Smart, those are two websites or channels on YouTube you can go to get more information about nutritional healing. Anyway, that's it, guys. I'm going to go. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. And I'm glad that I'm not just shouting into the darkness without anybody to hear me. I'm not one hand clapping in the wind. I'm one hand reaching out to your hand. And we are together making the world a better place. So thank you so much for your help and your side of it. Because you can't have a podcast without the listeners. So thank you so much for that. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to be back tomorrow with all unique and original programming, just like always. And that's it. I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibrations of the Holy Fifth Dimension. Until next time, guys, peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.